Mary Ann Bonetti, and I'm giving you another idea of how to make a really quick and easy Easter centerpiece. Now, this idea involves fresh flowers. These are lilies. You buy them uh, by the stem, and I bought these a couple weeks ago, um, and I'm going to reuse them for an Easter centerpiece. Now, you can see where the petals were. That stem has already bloomed, so I'm going to go in here, snip it off. The rest of these look pretty good. And as soon as I have it snipped off, I will recut the bottom of the stem. You can kind of tell that it's, it's a little bit lighter green. It's starting to rot, and here's the healthy green. I'm going to make that up to the healthy green. So that goes into water. And what I'm going to show you, see, here's another one. This one is spent. Cut this off. This one is spent. Cut this off. Um, cut up the healthy green. And this one's going to go in. And what I'm doing is I'm arranging, I just have three stems of lilies, I'm arranging so that they're all facing outward. So every flower is leaning in a specific direction. This one is leaning more out this way towards me. If I turned it like this, it'd be leaning this direction. But I want these three flowers to all be leaning outward, not inward. So I'm going to place this so it's leaning outward. Now, the reason is because the next step is I went out into the garden and I gathered snapdragons. That's another video, harvesting snapdragons. Now, the snapdragons, when you harvest them, all these stems, these blossoms here, can come off because they're going to be under water. And I use a uh, plastic, recycled plastic bag to just keep my mess under control as I just use my fingers to strip off all the lower leaves and buds of the snapdragons. Now look at this. Snapdragons also lead towards the light. They don't always go straight. I'm going to show you how to take advantage of that little curve in that flag, uh, snapdragon stem. As I clean the lower leaves of all of these off, and it goes right into my little bag, keeping my work area. I have one little random blue salvia. I take all the leaves off of that. One little patch of blue in there. Getting all these ready to go so the leaves are not underwater. Um, besides keeping leaves not in water, you want to make sure your vase is very clean uh, because a very good clean vase will have less bacteria. See that is kind of leaning outwards. Keep that in mind because that's going to be part of the lesson today. Now these are just leaves from a privet hedge and I'll be putting these in last. So here we go. Now I have all my snapdragons ready. Remember I had one straight snapdragon. So you start with the flower that grows straight up. This one's growing straight up. I'm going to make this bouquet holding it in my hands. This is straight up. This one's rather straight up. It's going straight up. See how this is leaning? I'm not going to put it like this. It's leaning in. I'm going to face it, put it so it leans outward. Always holding the bouquet in my fingers. This one's leaning out this direction. So I'm building the bouquet in my hand, this one leaning out. Remember that yellow one that is so crooked? Well, it comes in good use if I just tuck it down lower and it fills in the space here. Now, so I turn this around. This was going out this direction. As long as I keep them tight up high, it doesn't matter these stems are going up in all directions. And let's fill in the last one here. And there's only one blue, so I'm going to poke it right down into the middle. Okay, now I'm going to take my scissors, because I have this nice solid bouquet here, and I can clip off these ones that are longer, that are going out in weird directions. And now this whole thing, remember I hold it right underneath where the flowers start, goes smack into the middle of my arrangement, where I've already placed the lilies. Ta-da! Okay, so now I have a nice full arrangement of flowers, evenly spaced. If I need to fill in, I will add a couple of little sprigs of green. Look what I did. See how this is leaning outward? So I poke it into the side so it's leaning outward, making the whole design a little bit more full. And lilies and snapdragons, if I keep the water clean, they're going to last, oh, maybe five to seven days. So you can refill the water. Uh, just dump out the old water and refill it with fresh water every day or two. Okay, now, I'm not done yet, because it's Easter time. So any basket, this is just a metal basket, 
any basket you could turn into a centerpiece. And this doesn't really fit in there unless I add the Easter grass. Easter grass is readily available, uh, very inexpensive, and I'm making a hole in my Easter grass. It's a little hole right in there, like a little nest, because that is where my base goes. There we go. You can see it looks great from all these, but wait, there's more. Those little plastic Easter eggs. I like these. Um, I'm just going to set them all around. And these are going to come in handy, especially the plastic kind of open up. Put some jelly beans in there. Because when the festivities begin, I can have the kids grab these Easter eggs and we'll hide them around the house. And here's a great tip. When you have an Easter egg hunt, the first time the adults find them and the kids, uh, the adults hide them and the kids can find them. And then keep those kids busy, assign each child a chance to hide the eggs while the other kids go and look for them. That gives them something to do and you can enjoy your Easter dinner or your Easter brunch. I'm going to take this whole thing, put it on top of a tray, and now I can carry my centerpiece for wherever it needs, be it outside on the patio table, indoors, or in an entry hall. This has been Mary Ann with Easy Answers for Great Gardens.